Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Matters of Faith, the radio show. Matters of Faith is a show designed to bring issues of interest to you, the listening audience, that will challenge, encourage, motivate, and inspire you to keep the faith. I am your host, the Reverend Dr. J. Lauren Russell, and it's my job to engage you in stimulating dialogue, dialogue that's inspiring, encouraging, motivating, dialogue and conversations that will help you build your determination, your commitment, and your character, conversations that will help you keep the faith. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. 1 John 5 and 4. And now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, without further ado, it is time for Matters of Faith, the radio show. Good evening, everybody. It's Monday, October 9th. It's 8 o'clock, and it's time for Matters of Faith, the radio show. I am your host and producer, Reverend Dr. J. Lauren Russell. Tonight, we're talking about the article and the topic, the way of escape, the way of escape. And we are live on Matters of Faith and the J. Lauren Russell Facebook groups. Telephone and tell a friend they don't want to miss this show tonight. And our very special guest tonight is Chaplain Michael Harley. Please telephone, tell a friend they don't want to miss this show tonight. Chaplain Michael Harley is with us. We're talking about the way of escape. We're live on Matters of Faith and the J. Lauren Russell Facebook groups. Matters don't forget to Let me add just one more thing. And now, let me add just one more thing. Get Don't your forget subscription to support to our advertisers and our sponsors, the JLR Company and J. Lauren Russell Consulting LLC, for all of your church financial consulting needs. Check out our website, www.jlorenrussellconsulting.com. That's www.jlaurenrussellconsulting.com or simply give us a call, 718-328-8096, 718-328-8096. If you want to train your trustees, if you want to develop your property, if you need a church loan, give us a call. We'll be there to help. Matters of Faith, the book, can be purchased at my cash app, dollar sign Matters of Faith. The cost of the book is $22.80. That's $22.80. You can send your check of money order to the JLR Company, Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. That's Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. Get the book. It will absolutely bless your life. You can also get it as an ebook. All you need to do is go to www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. That's www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. The book has no shipping and handling if you get it as an ebook. And also check out the Eat Okra app for all black owned restaurants all over the nation. That's right, Eat Okra. And finally, subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Let me add just one more thing. Get your subscription to Better Mag Magazine today. A two-year subscription is only $27.50. That's www.abettermag.com, www.abettermag.com. This I'm going to share with you because I want you to know about it. Please join us on Saturday. This is next Saturday, October 14th, from 12 to 4 p.m. at Tesoro's the Italia Restaurant in Pleasantville, New York, for lunch to meet with street artist Michael Bailey, AKA Zebra. Michael paints prints of sports figures as well as entertainment figures and sells them outside of Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Michael is handicapped and needs a new mobility scooter to get around. A donation of $25 to purchase the new scooter you buy your lunch will get you a Yankee poster printed by Michael and an afternoon of good food and good company. You'll also have the opportunity to purchase an original painting done by Michael. There will be many choices to see and buy. 
on your screen, you see Mariano Rivera, you see a giant player, you see Selena, you see uh, 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 Tupac, you see Bob Marley, you see Miles Davis, you see Lady Day, you see Michael Jackson, you see Prince, you see Madonna, you see Whitney Houston, and you see Amy Winehouse. Wide selection, and they're awesome. So take a look, make sure you join us. Again, let me give you the address. It is in the Tesoro d'Italia restaurant in Pleasantville, New York. We're going to do that on this coming Saturday. We're supported by Rosin, who's putting it together, yours truly, Reverend Dr. J. Lauren Russell, Dr. Jeff Gilbert, and many Rotarian clubs under the guidance of yours truly, J. Lauren Russell, who's the district governor. For more information, write this down. Please don't forget, write this down. 914-329-6583. 914-329-6583. Three two nine six five eight three to make your reservation. Please, ma'am, please, sir, join us. It's going to be a spectacular day, and you're going to have an opportunity to get spectacular posters and paintings and prints. And now the article, The Way of Escape. That article can be found in my column, Matters of Faith, at the Bronx Chronicle, www.thebronxchronicle.com. It can be found in the Yonkers Insider, www.yonkersinsider.blogspot.com, Better Mag Magazine, www.abettermag.com, Black Westchester Magazine, and Pamela's Big Heart Newsletter, The Way of Escape. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, New King James Version. No temptation has overtaken you except as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. The way of escape. Temptation is germane to the human experience. Not even Jesus was exempt from it. The question that we must wrestle with is not whether or not we are tempted, but how we respond when we are tempted. The scripture from Paul to the church in Corinth makes it clear that whatever temptation a person faces will never overtake him or her if they remain faithful to God. A great example of enduring temptation is found in the fourth chapter of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, where Jesus is tempted by Satan. After Jesus had fasted 40 days, he was no doubt hungry. The first temptation was for him to turn a stone into bread. The second was a temptation to prove himself to be divine by throwing himself off the mountain so that the angels would catch him. The third temptation was Satan promising him rulership of the world if he changed his loyalty from God, the Father, to Satan. The way of escape that Jesus exemplified was and is found in the Logos, the written word of God, which we call the Holy Bible. Jesus responded to each temptation with a direct biblical quote. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Temptation is hard to resist. When Satan took Jesus on the pinnacle and showed him the kingdom of the world, he thought the temptation of power and influence would be an offer he could not refuse. All Jesus has to do to get it was bow down and worship him. Satan didn't know who he was talking to. He thought he did, but he had no idea that Jesus truly was and is God in the flesh. Jesus' response to Satan was declarative, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Jesus is the word of God in the flesh. Temptation could not overcome him because he personified the promises of the Father. Quote, God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Unquote. Jesus set the standard for all believers and gave us a method against being swallowed up in the tempter's snare. While being tempted in the wilderness, Jesus showed us the way of escape, which is the word of God. Be blessed. And now here's my question. In what ways can we effectively respond when confronted by temptation? Let me ask that question again. In what ways can we effectively respond 
when confronted by temptation. This gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce to some and to present to others my very special guest this evening. Michael Hawley was born and raised in Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. He attended LaGuardia High School for the Performing Arts and spent 10 years in the theater district, building his acting and producing skills. He spent time at City College in New York and traveled internationally to Japan, Moscow, Belgium, and around the United States. He has had several theater, television, and production credits over the years, but for the last 15 years, he has provided entertainment for the senior community in the New York area. His musical range is quite impressive. Barbie Darren, Jackie Wilson, Nat King Cole, Lou Rawls, Frank Sinatra, and I think even Perry Cuomo. He is also a DJ, bringing love, compassion, and commitment to the wonderful community of seniors. He is a much sought after host who can be found hosting parties and, and gospel circles all around New York with such luminaries as Hezekiah Walker, Fred Hammond, Israel Horton, and others. He has been married to recording artist Kim Harley for the past 23 years. Michael is a credentialed prayer chaplain with Healing Hearts Chaplaincy of Greater New York under the leadership of Dr. Best. He is actively studying to become a grief or certified grief counselor. Michael is the youngest of seven children from parents who met in Harlem in 1966 after immigrating to New York City from Fayetteville in Charlotte, North Carolina. Matters of Faith family, would you welcome with me tonight my very special guest, this young man who's extremely talented and gifted, but he's also a child of God. Would you welcome with me tonight, Chaplain Michael Harley. I think I got it. I, I, th I think I captured you in that. You can turn your camera on now, let everybody see your wonderful smile. All and right, I'm going to stop me... my share now, and then we're going to have an opportunity to talk. So I want to ask you a question as you're looking for your little camera to turn it on so we can see. <laughs> um, it, it's down at the bottom. It says, stop. I see, I think I see it. Yeah, just, there we go. There you All go. Right, there you go. There and, you I, go. I, and I had a little uh, icon there that I want to, a uh, little um, uh, a little video in the background there. I can change that if you want me to. No, no, that's perfect. That's fine. That's that's but yours. No, that's you. That's <laughs> you. And I like it because it, it's, it's what we're doing tonight. So yeah. listen, I've read your bio. That you heard it. I um, gave them a little information about you, but I'm going to ask you the same question I ask every one of my guests before we do anything else. They know a little bit about you, but tell us something about you that we don't know and we really should know. Well, uh, can you guys hear me? First of all, yeah, I want to hear you fine. Uh, thank you, sir, for having me on, Pastor. I really got to know you in the last year and a half. You've been very uh, instrumental in, in helping me along with uh, my endeavors as it pertains to uh, your work around the city. So I thank you, sir, for that. Um, but what people should know about me is I'm just discovering that I am the the byproduct of oppression. My parents came to New York City because they were just ending the second great, great migration of Blacks coming from the South, seeking better ways of life. And I'm a product of that. And it's just the, the realization of that is something like that like when you do 23 and Me, you discover that, you know, your ancestors are here, but to really know that your parents, my father, my mother, came to New York for a better life from the South. I, they wouldn't have met each other had it not been for them oppressed. So I believe that good things could come because they built a family, my brothers and sisters, and they, my, both my parents have passed on, but mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters were a strong unit with many um, nephews and nieces and family, but we're a strong unit here in the New York area. But because of the sacrifice that my parents made, leaving their families, I'm here. And I want to do right by them. Well, that's all right. That's good. You know, it's interesting because my parents migrated from the South too. My mom came from South Carolina. My dad came from North Carolina by way of Philadelphia. He was born in North Carolina, but he was raised in Philadelphia. But they met, guess where? In Harlem. Harlem. There in you Harlem. go. See, so this is a very in common Harlem. story for many of us. So Now, where uh, were you born? Where, 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 I'm the Coney Island, Coney Island Hospital. Coney, Coney Island Hospital. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, you almost made it. I'm, I, was, I was born in Harlem Hospital. So My wife was born in Harlem. My York. wife was Harlem Hospital. My wife is that right? 
73. My wife was born in Harlem Hospital. Well, you see, your wife's born the best. I, no, there's no other possible to be born. I mean, you, you guys were there, but you know, it was got to be Harlem is the place. So. Yeah, come on. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. As, long, as long as you were born, that's what's most important. You're there here. You go. So that, yes, that's sir. good. But I want to thank you for that. And thank you for sharing that, you know, because that's important. This this second migration that you talked about. My parents were, for, of course, a part of not the it wasn't really the first migration, even though they came here in the uh, in the 50s, in the late 40s and early 50s, they came here um, to, to find a better life. And, and the migration was continuing because during that time, you know, you had you had segregation discrimination, marginalization. You had um, all of these different things taking place in the South and finding uh, a, a work was very, very difficult. And, and, and having a, uh, what we might call a sense of human right wasn't there in the South when they were down there. So they migrated up here and, and, they, and they started like your parents did a, a new way of life, a new lifestyle. Right. And, um, you know, and it's interesting because my my siblings, all three of them, migrated back to the South. And that's a new there's phenomenon. A re there's a reverse yeah. migration taking place. Yes, back. and it's actually changing the political map. And Atlanta, Georgia, is an example of that in, in parts of North Carolina. South Carolina is a little slow on the uptake, but certainly large parts of North Carolina and certainly the state of Georgia have experienced this re-migration back. But I'll add that you are not as, uh, you're young, you're right with me because the second great migration was 1940 to 1970. So your parents were in that number yep. of, the, yep. of the second great migration, mm -hmm. uh, you know, before, but the first one was before World War II. Right. But now exactly. as we get into uh, after, after the, you know, uh, during we saw the riots, and we saw the different things happening in the uh, 60s and 70s really cemented that and they kind of slowed down because the country was having a rebirth, so to speak, throughout yeah. that time. So we, you're certainly your parents and my parents were certainly part of that second great migration. Yep, yep, yep. It's amazing that uh, and I was I was actually I was I, I did a service yesterday for a young man who passed away um, in his mid 70s. And his parents migrated here as well. But they migrated from St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. But that right. was another part of a great migration as well. Little Caribbean right. Islands, right? Uh, for for uh, even a better way of life, even though they are U.S. territory, they still sure. came here because the, the opportunities were greater here. Yeah. And then New York, which is where they were greater still than the South, they didn't migrate to the South. They migrated to New York and Chicago mm -hmm. and places like that. Watts, California, and things exactly. like that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and, and I, I'll even add in that the, when you talk about uh, the Caribbean islands, everyone had their hand, the French, the Spanish, even the Russians, everyone had their hand in the colon colonialization of the, uh, particularly British, the British and British Columbia and Barbados, they had their hand in the colon colonialization of these countries and some of them as they left and got liberated between the last 60 or 70 years some of them have not fared as well particularly haiti and so you know when the when the french had haiti you know that you know you know the french revolution the, some of them have, have never really recovered financially or they were saddled with such debt that they couldn't really um you know you you, uh, you have a lot of um financial burden and and that made them leave even their homeland to seek better lives in the states, you so to speak. So I, you know, I'm aware of that as well. So, well, you know, here's the interesting thing. You mentioned Haiti. Um, Haiti was the first country in the Western Hemisphere to claim their independence from Europe. The first before the United States, they wrote the first Declaration of Independence, and they were the first liberated country in the Western Hemisphere, and um uh the united states actually used a lot of what they of the constitution that was created in haiti to create the constitution here in the united states and they 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 mirrored them in a lot of ways uh, the unfortunate thing is that the world never took kindly to that liberation and literally um has economically squeezed haiti out of everything and so having been the first liberated country with all of the resources that were available, essentially they have been squeezed out of the economic um, uh, 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 economics of the world, period. 
And so they are one of the poorest countries in the world because of the uh, economic boycott that has been right. levied against them worldwide by all of those countries that were, as you mentioned, the colonizers. Right. They backed up, backed off, dropped everything. And, and, so def- and, and, and thus devaluing the dollar. And also, too, you know, these coups that are going on, some of them are always sometimes um, supported by, you know, nefarious means and governments. I and mean, I won't mention names, but sometimes they want to push a uh, a different agenda mm. and, and they'll use the financial dollar to kind of blackmail or to coerce mm. that country into doing, you know, or, or placing a person of power in, you know, just not, but three years ago, they killed the president of, of yeah. Haiti. This is just, yeah. I think it was two years. Yeah. <clears throat> and set the economy into a tailspin and, you know, a thus devaluing their dollar much like Mexico. But, um, you know, we, we, um, well, we, we, we are resilient people. And I believe that um, God still sits on the throne, and 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 at the end, He's He will make things right or making. Oh, there's no right. doubt. There's no yes. doubt. There's no doubt. No doubt about it. And it's interesting because, well, first of all, let me say this. Uh, Anna, one of our viewers, Anna Berry, says, "My family came from Fayetteville, North Carolina." Okay. And then, and then and then Andrew jumped in and said he was born in Harlem Hospital as well in 1949. Father came uh, from Barbados, and his mother came from the U.S. Virgin Islands. So, 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 you know, this world is tiny and, and, and Andrew and I worked together for many, many years over at the psych, uh, Manhattan State Psychiatric Center. So we, we have a lot of, a lot, a lot of commonalities there. Didn't know it, History. didn't know that we had the same birth spot, <laughs> oh, so yeah. that's good. but here's yeah. the interesting thing that you said, you know, and it's right, you know, the resiliency of the human character and then the, 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 the desire of, of humanity, the, the true desire of humanity to, to make the world a community is stronger than all of the negativity that could ever have taken place and ever will take place. I believe that the positive way outweighs the negative, but it's up to the positive, it's up to the people who have that to make it a reality. Because if we don't work to make it a reality, then bad things happen when good people don't stand up, don't speak up and don't do anything. So, so that's important. And speaking of important, you know, the, 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 the article that was written, The Way of Escape, you know, and I, I thank you, by the way, I want to thank you in advance for, for agreeing to be my guest okay. long before you knew what we were going to be talking about, because <laughs> I didn't know what we were going to be talking about, because I never know until the Lord oh, revealed to me. So I'm yeah. glad that you, you know, took tonight. And, and I tell you what, um, um, it has never failed to happen that the, the topic of discussion is always right for the person who comes on because i pray a lot about that and the lord always has the right person at the right time for the right subject on the right show so thank you for doing that i appreciate that and um tonight we're really going to be talking about the way of escape how do you avoid the temptations that come along in life and how can we position ourselves really to be more effective in our life so that we don't get caught up and the vicissitudes of life, that is the negative, the positive, you know, all of the things that can go wrong, that do go wrong. How do we avoid getting caught up in that and keep ourselves moving in the right trajectory? And I think thinking about you, Michael, um, you know, you, you kind of, for me, exemplify that because you walk this line that I know, having been a DJ for many years of my life, and in fact, I still kind of do it because I'm doing this, right? right, but, right, but, right. but being in the entertainment world, being in that, 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 that where the limelight shines brightly, um, but not allowing yourself to get caught up in the whirlwind of it requires a deep appreciation for and with the creator of the universe to understand that it's not about you, but it's about him, it's about the growth, the development, and all of that. So I'm glad that you're here tonight. So I, I asked you the question, tell us something about you that we didn't know, that we should know, and you gave me a great answer. And so now I'm going to ask you, what did you think when you read the article? Well, you know, I, I thought about, you know, obviously we always go for myself first and we personalize it. I think about insulation. That's the word that came out to me. And I think if we're insulated, I think that um, that we, like we're covered in that way. And we'll, if we get time, we'll talk about a movie that my mom and there was a scene in the movie, but I'll get back to that. But first, let me just preemptively say that the first thing I thought about is if we're insulated, 
like when you said when 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 there was nothing for Satan to work with when he made when he tempted there was nothing in him sometimes there's nothing in you to to start with is there's nothing to catch a fire there's nothing to work with like um because we're certainly tempted but not beyond what we can handle but even me being married 23 years it just went well with me it worked with me i love being married i love you know i embraced it because it insulated me from being run the streets and girl to girl and this one here and that one there it insulated me and also too what it what it provided for me was a insulation of sorts and even working with different people like i would i might see a thousand people in any given month and i get all kinds of personalities but um and i you know even want to dedicate this show tonight to my godmother ruth c jones and i, I don't want to be all around the place but she told me something she said let people be who they are and i was 19 when i when i when she became my godmother and I'm 51 and she just passed this past week on last Thursday and, uh, oh, and I'm, just, I'm certainly mm -hmm. grieving her, but mm -hmm. I dedicate my, uh, this interview tonight to her, but some of the nuggets, I think that we have to um, seek out those things. I, I knew, and I don't know if this is really giving you the answer you want, but it, it goes back to how we insulate ourselves. I knew that, I mean, unfortunately, my dad died when I was 16. He was 53 years old. And, you know, he was a heavy drinker. And, um, uh, you know, he was 53. And I was 16 years old. And um, I knew that I needed guidance. I knew that I needed men in my life. I had my brothers. But I would seek out what I needed. And I think people do that. People seek out where, when, and how they need things. So the first thing I needed was to grow as a man. So God would provide those people. I, I, I wanted what I didn't have. I wanted that guidance. And I think that when you can insulate yourself, when those temptations come your way, you're able to have some sort of like field of, of protecting yourself. And I think every time that I've not, I think people sort of know. And I think every time I, I've not listened to that voice or not when you go somewhere, you sort of know. Like if you go into, uh, you go to the donut donut shop, you're not looking for a, 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 a carrot and apple smoothie. Mm. It's very unlikely you'll see that in in the donut shop. I mean, I'm just making that analogy. I know it's very mm -hmm. simple, but some people sometimes mm -hmm. you sort of, you, you know, what's down that area. You you know what's down there, and so I think about things like that about how we insulate ourselves will prepare us for those temptations when they come that's interesting I, I like the analogy too going to a donut shop uh versus going to the bar i mean if you go to the bar you know you're not gonna find donuts in the bar you're not gonna find you're not gonna find a drink in the donut shop because it just yeah. doesn't that's not what's there but it, but right. but interestingly enough you can put yourself and that's what i heard you say you can put yourself not find yourself but put yourself in compromising situations and positions. And you started out by saying that when you talked about insulation, um, to be insulated means that, you know, you know that I have a wife that I'm dedicated to, I'm committed to. So I won't put myself in a position where I'm tempted to do those things. And in this instance, we're talking about the, the flirtatious things, the things that would drive you to, to be unfaithful or to engage in activities if a person who's not married might tend to do because you you insulated yourself you surrounded yourself and now you don't go into those places because they are not the place that you want to be because there's a, something else more important to you i heard that so the insulation was really i i hadn't thought about that word before that's a very good word it's a very good word is it, it talks about for me you know um putting around you those things that you need to protect you from things that go on around you. So you yes. put it in you so that things around you don't become so attractive to you that right. you're led astray to them. Yeah. That's a good word. That's a good and word. I, and, I, and, I, and I believe also too is, is a desire to, I think that, um, I think you have to want to be there. These things I want, like, you know, even, even with um, like even the desires of our hearts and when god speaks mm. about delight yourself in me i'll give you the desires of your heart 
And um, even with my uh, acting, it doesn't even, you know, with, with, you know, with marriages, yes, but even in things in our life that would have us do things that are contrary outside of our character. So, for example, if I'm um, with my acting and I, you know, people are, you know, I went mm-hmm. to the high school performing arts and when we, I was young and I wanted to be famous and like, oh, be an actor and, you know, you, you get this thing and you, mm-hmm. you know, we're young. And so as the years went on. God will have a, a passion. He'll like, you know, God literally put me into the nursing homes. I, I mean, I just like literally, and it's like something just sparked and I get to these nursing homes and I, the music is the tool, mm. but it's really the ministry. I'm ministering to these people. And so, you know, I'm hugging them and dancing with them and really, you know, showing love and compassion to them. And the music is the tool in which I use. But at the same time, I will, um, you know, you want to, you know, you want to be on TV. You want that TV series. You want to, you know, you want to get out there and, you know, it's in you. And, um, but every so often, every, but it, God keeps reminding you of where you are. But I'll say, then every so a year go by, he'll give you a TV show. And then a year go by, you'll get a commercial. A year go by. And these things come your way. They're not difficult. So I believe that God wants me in the space that I am. And I think also part of this protection is praying that your will is God's will. I think that we sometimes fall short and and temptation is entering when we're outside of what God's will for our life is. So like, you know, you said, I want to be famous. I want to be T. But if you realize what's easy, what keep, what's, what are, what would you do for free? What are people asking you to do every day? And that's hosting or singing or DJing. And it's like, that's natural. That's how, that's how I've made my, took care of my family for the last decade and a half doing that. I think when we go contrary to that, I think that we, we fall into trouble. You know, someone asked the guy, I said, why'd you, why'd you rob that bank? He said, well, that's where the money is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's always, so it's like people, people know. And I think that um, it's a matter of um, having a higher level of intelligence about what and where we are and what we expose ourselves to. And I think that will help us too. I think even going back to me being younger and seeking out leadership for men, but I believe that the 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 paradigms of, of, of how we are engaging in these last 15, 20 years with the advance of social media, it's become very difficult. I think we are, are extraordinarily distracted and uh, it's easier uh, for our young kids to not, you know, stay stay the course because there's just so much from the left and from the right that looks really you know really is everything shiny mm. and that's it's that's, that's a, that's a dangerous when everything's shiny and everything's not so cut and dry or at least it doesn't appear so cut and dry and for people who are not grounded from that moment before or in, in their youth they could be easily, you know, we talk about the, uh, you know, the good ground, the follow ground, and all the seeds being scattered, growing on these different places. I think it goes back to uh, a dedication to a cause. And we don't always get it right. I mean, I was, I mean, I, we got a, <laughs> I went, I, a little a thing that happened the other day, and we, um, uh, we were getting off the highway, and it was, you know, Belt Parkway, and I'll share this with, you know, the audience tonight, because I, wa- I want to be transparent, and I want to be able to to be able to not i'm not perfect so the guy we're getting off and we're getting off the road and the guy jumps out of traffic and jumps back into traffic and literally almost ran my wife off the road hmm. and i was just so angry i said man i said kim kim drop inside of him you know and i i don't know what i was gonna do but that you know you get somebody who you like if you put me in danger that's different but my wife was really startled and we could have rolled off into the into the side of the road i was just so it, got, it, it really got me into that moment so I, I i i said well i had a water bottle and i tossed the water bottle over the side of the car hit the guy's car and i i, I felt so convicted even after i did it because he got scared and fell back and i just oh gosh it's just like so he could have had a gun he could have something but i just you know i just want to be transparent to your audience tonight and i'm not perfect but i just like you know i just but it but i i felt you know sometimes temptation will hide itself in justification so temptation is not just oh you're not supposed to have that or oh, you're not it could be it could it could it could ensconce itself in a what you would feel is a natural justification for your indignation or your righteous anger 
And that I think is even more dangerous than just when it's just flat out temptation. The stuff that's hidden inside something that seems right. You know, someone goes and, you know, calls your wife out her name and you want to go and bust the guy in the mouth. And it seems like it's right because, like, you know, he, you know, any anybody else but like, you know, the wife's brother going, what, what'd you say when that guy said that? And dad, what'd you say when he came out of his mouth? And, and it would seem, but it, that's a temptation as well. And those are some, those are the ones that are harder to do because they feel, because it's ensconced and hidden in, 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 in a justification, oh, to a, what appears to be a justified act. Well, that's, I'm, I'm, I like your transparency. I like your transparency. Um, and you said a number of things that kind of sparked some things in my mind. Uh, you talked about listening to what's on the inside so that you don't get off purpose. And I like to think, I said this the other day, when you're on purpose, you know, when you really find purpose in life, you become a magnet and you begin to draw to you all of the things that you need in order to be who it is that you were called to be when you're on purpose. Now, you also talked about being in the nursing homes and, but the desire was to be in theater and in, in, in movies, oh. but, but because you had found purpose and the purpose was that I found that I wanted to be in front of people and I wanted to bring a sense of joy to their heart. And see, that was the purpose. It, 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 it wasn't, you thought it might've been in the movies, you thought it might've been in, in, in all of those things, but it was really providing a, an entertainment source of outlet for people. That's what you like to do. And, when, and then when the opportunity presented itself, open the door, the door opened, for you to go into the nursing homes and begin to, as you said, minister to people. And all of a sudden, being there was like being on stage. It was like being in the movies. It was like being, you know, on, on, a, on a weekly uh, a broadcast or on a, on a television show, but with different audiences regularly. And then the, they, they saw that and, and they had a chance to give you immediate feedback. So you were on purpose and you began to draw to yourself all of those things that were necessary to show you what your purpose is really about. Now, let me let me just take that and I'm going to flip it for you. I'm going to flip it around. When you're on purpose, you're a magnet. When you get out of purpose, you're still a magnet. But you draw to yourself all of the negative things in life. The magnetism doesn't change. You begin to draw to yourself all of the negativity that comes. So the magnetism comes when you on purpose. It doesn't leave you when you get off purpose. That's why you gotta be careful what you ask for <laughs> because you become a magnet, you draw those things to you and all of a sudden you find yourself weighted down with all kinds of different things that can literally steal your joy and take your life. So I like that. Listen to the inner voice. Know where you are, where you're going, and don't do not put yourself in a position to, um, you know, to be tempted, but put yourself in a position to be guided. And I heard you say that you said you began to look for people to guide you, to help you, to 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 not to replace dad but to help guide me along the way because he wasn't there. So who was there to, you could have went a lot of different directions. I mean, you could have, you could have, you could have found someone who was, you know, like the, the neighborhood drug Lord and followed him, followed her and learn all of the nuances of living in that life, how to maneuver, how to manipulate, Train your children how to tell the police what he ain't here and do it with a straight face and they can never tell that they're lying because they've been trained real well. But that's not the direction that you chose. You chose a different direction. And music. Talked about your music. And I know your music because that's how I met you. I met your music because you were you, you were actually the, 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 the entertainer at the, the, the seniors banquet at my home church. And that's why I met you. And I thought that you were magnificent. You did a great job. And I remember going up to you, asking you if you had a particular song. You said, look, what's the name of it? 
and you Googled it, played it, and it was great. I said, go ahead, he knows what he's doing. But having been a DJ, you know, I watch stuff like that. And you oh, yes, sir. when I was a DJ, if you didn't have it in the rack, if you didn't have it, <laughs> it wasn't you didn't have it at all. But right, now right. That's, that's not the way things work anymore. And so I met you. So the music was designed to help to, to create the opportunity to do ministry. That's what I, that's what I, that's what I saw in you that day. I saw it later on. And, and as you know, I, I've, I've engaged you a couple of times myself to do something. Yes. Yes, yes. Spreading sir. your wings because I, 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 when I, when I see something and I see that the person is on purpose and they're doing what the Lord has called them to do, I want to, I want to do as much as I can to help them to do as much as they can because the most important thing is to reach people to help them to become the best that they can, and that's what you showed me. So, so I appreciate all of that. that. I heard you say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I, you know, I, you know, also too. I think. um my mother sort of taught me uh, from young, and I'll I'll use that story now about widening our gaze and really, I think from young, my mother taught me, <laughs> my mother said to me when I was 12 years old, she pulled me aside and there was a birthday party for me in the house. And they, uh, you know, my mom was like half Jehovah's Witness and half in the world, so to speak, you know, but she counts that as, as a really powerful in terms of teaching her conservatism. But she was a very good woman, like the what was put in her, even though she left the South because of oppression, she never returned evil for evil. And mm -hmm. she was still that as from young. It wasn't about, you know, I was very popular, very funny, but I didn't have all the fancy clothes and the sneakers and the different things. But I was still me. I was very and it, it was like you couldn't you couldn't make fun of me because I didn't have the great my stuff was clean so you may not have the greatest stuff but you're clean and I remember watching this movie called The Help and um, mm -hmm. uh, some years ago we were watching and, and everyone was laughing about this one character Octavia Spencer's character mm -hmm. she does something really um, very mm -hmm. very nefarious yeah. with yeah, one yeah. of the pies <laughs> and people just thought that was just so funny my mother was so offended she said, "How could you be so low laughed? How could you? That was a, that was a, How could you be such a low laughed at like that and do something like that? I don't care what she did. I don't care if she called you anything but a child of God. You don't do that." And it just it just hit me. Even though I knew who my mother was, but it hit me that everybody's laughing about this. But my mother was like, "You don't do that to people. You don't. You don't." And I think that progresses us forward as a people. I think, I think that even though people people are doing living and dying. And and I even I, my thoughts are going even out tonight is the third day of fighting of Hamas in Israel. They're they're you know on the other side of the country. Uh, it's it's like a living hell. I believe that even in all of that, God remains dedicated to our cause on this planet. And I say that with I'm more sure of it today than I ever was because it's not in the living and dying of of our people because He said. You're appointed once unto die, then after that, the judgment. So I understand the living and dying of this flesh. What I do believe is God affixed us in this planet at this time, put the sun, the moon, the stars, gave us dominion over this earth. He wants us to figure it out. He's watching his little children who give, who've been given free will. He wants us to figure it out. Even in amongst our tears, the triumphs, all the good stuff, all the bad stuff. But I'm telling you, I'm 51 years old. God has blessed me with enormous, amazing people who have helped me navigate and push through this life and give value to my existence for why I'm here and to always widen my gaze. You know, you, you, you can you can sit there and go, oh, you know, oh, it's just oh, this day they're all against me. And then, you know, and then, you know, and then you, but my mama did this. My mother said, well, if I keep on blaming and blaming them, we we be back to Adam and Eve after a while. With, if we're if we going to sit there and talk about who shot John and who did this and who that. So at some point, even in, in the realm of giving this kind of responsibility, there is a value attached to us widening our gaze and making it's not about you it's, it's, let's let's really take a look at it i mean we we, we don't want to we're not robots we were like i was explaining about the incident with the car rage but let's look at our numbers let's look at like you know let's look at what we've done let's look at you know you could be that person you could be that jerk you could be that you could be that person you know you do a numbers game you know we we've got time to live you know and god puts these laws and, and laws in place for us to do and be and exist and so mm -hmm. 
what is it, what would he have us to do so those are the things i think about and that that and even though i i i take issue with the inequity of things i do look at the inequity i do see a lot of things that don't seem fair and you know i've had friends and this guy left his wife and and uh she wound up having cancer and died, left two children. He was, she was begging him to come and take care. You know, like, these are your boys. And, and, a, and now the daughter's wayward. And now she went another way. You know, I won't mention their names, obviously. But he went on and, and lived well. He's living well in another part of the country and married a, a beautiful young wife. And, and he, and, but he, he left behind, he, you know, it's like, I would say carnage. Mm -hmm. He left this woman at a vulnerable time and didn't take care of her. And she, she died of cancer. And we went and held her hand, and you know, mutual mutual friends, and um, and I, I just I I was I, you know I I sometimes have a hard time balancing those inequities, but I still believe that we um, that's part of that insulation that we talk about that God wants us to be insulated, that He wants us to be to be prepared for these things, so that we can that we can push through and have this existence and know that these things are going to happen. He says, you know, this life's going to challenge relations, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the earth. That also, too, takes a level of widening our gaze so it's not just on this level of me and you because our bodies will fail us and people will lie and our parents will, children will pass away. I, I buried three sisters. There were, there were seven of us. Mm. Three of my sisters are now gone. I, I have five sisters and three are gone. And I had to go and we had to bury three sisters over the last 15 years. And I'm telling you, anyone who's listening or watching on the YouTube or any way they're watching, if you lost a sibling, it does something to you. You know, it 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 pulls your heart out. But um, you know, but it takes work not to be bitter. It takes work, and that's and but I don't, I don't, I don't want to. Uh, I, I believe that God wants us to experience everything. I think we're wired to experience everything, the greatest horrors. And the greatest joys, mm -hmm. God is. He's designed us. To, he's designed us to say that. Even, even the idea of a tear falling down, or of you screaming out. You know, I, I remember after my mom passed, going into the room, and smelling her, her some of her clothing, or or in the dresser she had perfumes and things like that. And after the funeral, you thought it was over, but it, mm -hmm. the, the the grief doesn't really start. This is why I want to go back to being a grief counselor. The grief really starts when you get back and deal with the the newness of that person being gone and not not where they were but but wh where you are because of, of all of that and now it's time to now the test it's almost like it's like you don't get it until it's all finished you're sitting there and you're you get this you get that and oh you honey the test the test is not now honey the test is later on you know the test is like you're enjoying i would spend hours cooking i cook the house down I was spending hours cooking with my mom, having all kinds of meals and making lasagna and burgers and all kinds of stuff and making all kinds of roast this and roast that. And we had such a wonderful time in the kitchen. Death can't take that away. That's that's greatness. Because if you understand the full magnitude of us passing through of this moment that we're in time, we are we are parenthetically inserted into time in this space at this moment for what God's purpose is us to do. And I don't want to get and get caught up in the fact that some people got 40, some 60, some 100, some 101, some three. So I, if we don't get caught up in that, I think we can see the value of this life, of what we're able to do. And that take, and again, that takes work. You know, you, you mentioned some great points. In fact, some people responded to those points about your mom and, 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 and the grief. And when you talked about your friend who left his wife and then the tragedy of her death um, and all of that, and that, that's, that's important because, you know, when you talk about temptation, temptation doesn't always look like what we think it looks like. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily show up as Satan come along and say it's simply about you and your popularity or you and your 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 career or you and your your fame and fortune it may come along as you being tempted simply to step out on your marriage step out on your relationship step out on 
uh, anything. I mean, just just it, temptations can be so small, but they can have such dev it can have such devastating effects that we've got to we got to really examine what we're made of and what is it that we're made of so that um and you talked about death and dying and i really get it i mean i lost both no no no, no. both of my parents died i didn't lose them because they're right here my eldest brother I, there was only there was four of us my eldest brother died it's about 20 21 years ago now um matter of fact it's longer than that my god yeah let me see longer than that hold on for a second let me take a look make sure uh yeah 1994 that's almost 30 years isn't it wow my oldest brother died in 1994 um uh, and similar to you my mom died when i was 14 and my dad died when i was 20. so yeah the grief that comes later um learning to live with the grief learning to um learning how to 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 process all of the emotions that you go through and then not be tempted to to hate god for that action because it's easy to do that just to hate him man you know you couldn't and then and then turn your back completely on him because you feel that you know you you why would you do this to me why would you do this I, what did i do to deserve this and so you begin questioning and so it's easy at that point to be led away into temptation to do things that you you historically wouldn't do or would be out of your character completely to do but you do it and so many of us because of and and, and interestingly enough sometimes it is the grief that causes us to yield to temptation it is the the, the you know the disappointments in life that that drive us to lead us to, 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 um, to sort of yield to temptation. It could be something that happened that made us yield. Uh, maybe it was the job that you didn't get, the raise that you were looking for. Uh, it could have been the relationship that you tried to establish and they said no to you. Whatever the case, I remember, I remember, I, I'll, be very, I'll be extremely transparent on this one. I remember my brother, my oldest brother was, was seeing someone and, um, and, and and she decided that she didn't want to see him anymore. My brother had been a drug addict growing up. And he'd stopped, he was clean for years. But at that point, at that point, he's like, man, I, I put everything I had into this relationship, you know? Uh, and suddenly it was no more. And he said, I got high. It's like, wow. Yeah, he said, I got high. And 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 we talked about it. He says, and he was on he was on parole at the time. He said, I gotta go see my parole officer. He said, I don't know what to do. I said, Well, I know what to do. I said, go and tell your parole officer what happened, just like you just told me. And he said, What? I said, Yeah, tell him. Tell him that you, you know, that you were broken and you did this it's because if you don't do it and they test you and you come up dirty they're going to violate you simple as that i was teaching that evening at church that afternoon i was doing a bible study and he said I'll tell you what he said um if i show up in bible study you know everything worked out if I don't, you know where I am. I said, okay, that's fair. And you got to understand, my brother used to lie about everything. He just lied to lie. He's lying. He liked lying. So I said, okay. Well, I was in there teaching and I looked up and who came bouncing in the door but my brother. I was like, hey, that's great. So when it was over, I talked. He said, I did, he said, I did exactly what you, what you suggested. I said, did you? He said, yeah. And he said, and he, he said, he said, my parole officer looked at me and said, Russell, he says, I respect that because that's what a man does. Man re accepts responsibility for his, his actions. He said, I'm not going to test you today. I'm not going to test you. He said, but 
make sure you don't do it again. And if you feel weak, let me know. And I was like, you know, I mean, I, I felt good about it because I was just doing what the Lord told me to tell him. Sure. But I was, but I was blown away by the results of what I told him and the fact that this man recognized the honesty and the integrity, the integrity. And so he was not tested and was not remanded back to custody. Back into custody. Right. It's amazing. I, I mean, I, you know, that and that, that's what I'm talking about when I when I think about, you know, what you said, insulate yourself. Yes. Being insulated, you know, that I can actually tell the truth in a situation and the and it will work out to my good because the Bible says all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. purpose. So when you're looking to avoid temptation, the way of escape is the same way that Jesus escaped temptation when he was on the mountain with Satan. The same word that he used to, 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 to um, make Satan get out of his face is the same word that you use to make Satan get out of your face. It's in the word. It's in the word. I like this. This is a good conversation. I'm, I'm enjoying yes, it. But listen, yes, we, we're, we're almost at the top of the hour. So at okay. 9 o'clock, what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to uh, go back to the top of the hour, uh, top of the show, and I want to uh, sort of um, uh, bring everybody back in play. I want to read the article again. I want to talk about the. Um, I want to talk about um, you know recognize my advertisers and sponsors, and then I want to look at in our next in the next portion of our sh of the broadcast. I want to bring in some of the comments that have been made on uh, Facebook. So we're gonna bring them into the conversation. So we'll have them join us by reading and, and talking about some of their comments. So I have put the question, the challenge question is up for them to see. I'm going to pin it so that everybody will be able to see it. And I really want you guys, as you know, to address the question, because the question is where we're going to get our participation. And the question is simple. And what ways can we effectively, now I'm using this word specifically and intentionally, in what ways can we effectively effectively respond when we're confronted by temptation so i'm going to do a i'm going to do a disappearing act you can do likewise michael and we're going to go back and we're going to do the um do everything that we need to do and then we'll be back in just a moment Don't forget to support our advertisers and our sponsors, the JLR Company and J. Lauren Russell Consulting, LLC, for all of your church financial consulting needs. Check out our website, www.jlorenrusselconsulting.com. That's www.jlorenrusselconsulting.com. Or simply give us a call, 718-328-8096, 718-328-8096. If you want to train your trustees, if you want to develop your property, if you need a church loan, give us a call. We'll be there to help. Matters of Faith, the book, can be purchased at my cash app, dollar sign Matters of Faith. The cost of the book is $22.80. That's $22.80. You can send your check of money order to the JLR Company, Post Office Box 301, New York, New York, 10035. That's Post Office Box 301. New York, New York, 10035. Get the book. It will absolutely bless your life. You can also get it as an ebook. All you need to do is go to www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. That's www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash 993177. The book has no shipping and handling if you get it as an ebook and also check out the eat okra app for all black owned restaurants all over the nation that's right eat okra and finally subscribe like and share our matters of faith youtube channel make sure that you subscribe like and share our matters of faith youtube channel
Let me add just one more thing. Get your subscription to Better Mag Magazine today. A two-year subscription is only $27.50. That's www.abettermag.com. www.abettermag.com. And now the article for the last time tonight, The Way of Escape. That article can be found in my column, Matters of Faith, at The Bronx Chronicle, www.thebronxchronicle.com. Yonkers Insider, www.yonkersinsider.blogspot.com. Better Mag Magazine, www.abettermag.com. Black Westchester Magazine and Pamela's Big Heart Newsletter. The Way of Escape. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, New King James Version. No temptation has overtaken you except as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. The way of escape. Temptation is germane to the human experience. Not even Jesus was exempt from it. The question that we must wrestle with is not whether or not we are tempted, but how we respond when we are tempted. The scripture from Paul to the church in Corinth makes it clear that whatever temptation a person faces will never overtake him or her if they remain faithful to God. A great example of enduring temptation is found in the fourth chapter of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, where Jesus is tempted by Satan. After Jesus had fasted 40 days, he was no doubt hungry. The first temptation was for him to turn a stone into bread. The second was a temptation to prove himself to be divine by throwing himself off the mountain so that the angels would catch him. The third temptation was Satan promising him rulership of the world if he changed his loyalty from God, the Father, to Satan. The way of escape that Jesus exemplified was and is found in the Logos, the written word of God which we call the Holy Bible. Jesus responded to each temptation with a direct biblical quote. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Temptation is hard to resist. When Satan took Jesus on the pinnacle and showed him the kingdom of the world, he thought the temptation of power and influence would be an offer he could not refuse. All Jesus has to do to get it was bow down and worship him. Satan didn't know who he was talking to. He thought he did, but he had no idea that Jesus truly was and is God in the flesh. Jesus' response to Satan was declarative, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Jesus is the word of God in the flesh. Temptation could not overcome him because he personified the promises of the Father. Quote, God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Unquote. Jesus set the standard for all believers and gave us a method against being swallowed up in the tempter's snare. While being tempted in the wilderness, Jesus showed us the way of escape, which is the word of God. Be blessed. And now my question for the final time tonight. In what ways can we effectively respond when confronted by temptation? Well, let me ask you one more time. In what ways can we effectively respond when confronted by temptation? Now, just before we go back to Michael and bring him back on, I want to I wanna skip back for just a moment. Um, pardon my skipping through the screens, but I want to talk about this for just a moment. Uh, on this coming Saturday, October 14th, there's going to be a fundraiser. Um, I met this gentleman. He is an artist. You see the works on the screen. These are portraits that he's drawn of, of famous athletes as well as personalities, entertainers as well. Uh, Miles Davis, Lady Day, Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna, Selena, Amy Winehouse, Whitney Houston, uh, Bob Marley, Tupac Shakur, uh, Mariano Rivera, and there's so many more. But please join us on this coming Saturday from 12 to 4 p.m. at Tesoros d'Italia, 
restaurant in Bronx or Pleasantville, New York. I know it's a little way up, but please, ma'am, please, sir, if you can do it in Pleasantville, New York for lunch and meet with street artist Michael Bailey, a.k.a. Zebra. Michael paints prints of sports figures and other athletes and other entertainers and sells them outside of Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Michael is handicapped, needs a new mobility scooter to get around. A donation of $25. And by the way, it's not just for the mobility scooter, but it's also for him. Michael is homeless. He used to own the largest Black-owned art gallery in the Northeast United States. He fell on hard times. Whatever happened, I don't know. But he fell on hard times and wound up homeless. He has congestive heart failure. So he's, he's in and out of hospitals. In fact, I understand he was just in the hospital this weekend and just came home or just got out, I should say. A donation of $25 to purchase the new scooter. You buy your own lunch. We'll get you a Yankee poster painted by Michael and an afternoon of good food and good company. You'll also have the opportunity to purchase an original painting done by Michael. There will be many choices to see and to buy. Some of them are on the screen for you to see right now. This event is being sp supported by Rosalind Costabile, Costabile uh, who's one of the Rotarians in the Yonkers, East Yonkers Rotary, where I am as well. Myself, Reverend Dr. J. Lauren Russell, Dr. Jeff Gilbert, and many ro Rotary clubs around and under the guidance of my governorship um, here in District 7230 of the Rotary Clubs. Please contact Rose at 914-329-6583 for a reservation. Please do that soon. If you can't make it, consider making a donation. You can reach out to Roz and she can tell you hi, how to do that. 914-329-6583. Uh, and I want to thank you for your participation. Thank you for nope. allowing us to be there. And, and thank you for helping us to do this with Michael. I really appreciate it. It goes without saying, uh, a little bit goes a long way when you put nope. it on hand. So please help, ma'am, please, sir. And thank you so much. Well, I've already introduced him. I've read his bio. You know a little bit about him. You also heard him speak. So you know his voice and you know that he's a gifted and talented individual. So I want to bring back to the second half of our show, my very special guest tonight, so that we can close out the show as strong as we began it. My special guest, friend, brother, and fellow chaplain, Chaplain Michael Harley. All right, so now we're back. I'm going to stop my share right now, and we're going to be talking with Michael again. Michael, listen, I want to ask you a question. You are a chaplain. As you know, I am a chaplain as well. So I want to ask you, Talk to me a little bit about your chaplaincy. Oh, well, it goes hand. I'm sorry. What do Listen. you do? Well, it goes hand in hand with my work in the nursing homes because we're uh, Dr. Kim Best, who's out of Brooklyn, is my overseer for the uh, Healing Hearts Chaplaincy. I wanted to show off. I think my wallet is in the, in, in, in the other room. I was going to show my badge and my ID, <clears throat> but we're supposed to do at least ten hours per month where we go into the hospitals, uh, visiting the sick and shut in, uh, praying when and where we can. And also we have a responsibility to always go out and find areas where we can be of use. So if someone's hurting in an area, we're, we're like mandated to actually stop and see if we can, if I'm driving and I see someone on the side of the road, needs whatever, an accident, anything you like, like that. The guy that you, if you hit with that bottle of he didn't, he, he didn't get the, he didn't, he didn't get the prayer. He didn't get the prayer chaplain, Michael. He got the other one. He, he got the angry husband. <laughs> So I, I'm not always perfect. So, but, but yeah, but we're, uh, Hey, I'm, I, I, I'd be working on averages here in terms of, so, but I appreciate that. But yeah, so we're, we're mandated to go and do that. So, um, also too, we do events like we, we, we were able to sponsor the, uh, uh the Vi night out for violence last month or that beginning of September. That's right. National Night Out. We were there at, at um in Brooklyn at the and we were like I think two hundred strong, and we were there passing out water and you know um just being engaging with the people, 
I was on the detail of Dr. Best. I had to stick close to her that that uh, whole entire night. But we were there from three o'clock all the way to like uh, three o'clock. No, no, twelve o'clock in the afternoon to about nine o'clock at night. So working with the police and you know the Brooklyn Borough President was there and other you know we Hakeem Jeffries was there. So so that was it was a good thing. So we just engage in the community and being civically responsible, and that's uh, part of what we do as as chaplains. Good. I thank you for that. I appreciate that. I'm a chaplain. I'm the chief chaplain, actually, uh, the New York State Chaplain Workers Task Force. Okay. And, uh, and, and I just wanted to make sure we gave some spotlight to what you do and why people become chaplains. In fact, we're starting a new class on Saturday. Uh, and so Saturday. I guess so. the question I have before you really quick insert, we, we I am allowed to carry, carry dual uh, a chaplaincy. So I want to say publicly on this program, if I if you be so to let me be one of your chaplains i would love to add that on and be one of your chaplains well you know here's the thing you're just gonna you know be careful what you ask for <laughs> chaplain in our in our in our unit you must complete our six-month training course wow okay you don't play because we want to make sure that our chaplains know what they're doing and when they get out there they, they know how to minister to people uh, ecumenically so that um, if they meet someone who doesn't have to be a Christian, they can still serve them because that's yes. a, so we do that. We we spend that time. So you you'll be more than welcome to do it uh, if you want to do it. We start on Saturday. I, I can get you. I'll send you an application. You can look at it, send it to, uh, fill it out, send it back if you like, and then we go from there. And okay. all of these classes. And by the way, this is good for all of all of you out there as well. The class is open to anyone. Uh, I can send you if you want to know more. You know how to reach me, but just ask me. I will send you the the uh, application. You can complete it. Uh, it's a six month training course. We're doing them all online this time. So everyone, we meet once a month. Meet once a month, second Saturday of the month. We will meet for uh, for an, uh, literally an hour and forty five minutes, um, and we will. You have a particular book that we are using. You have to get the book, and we go through two chapters a month. There's 12 chapters in the book. But one of the things that we're going to do, we started it this year, but we're going to continue it next year, is that every chaplain will be certified in CPR. So one of the Rotarian clubs that's in my district stepped up and volunteered, and they came in and they trained a portion of our unit um, this past June. Uh, they've trained, I think, 27 of them. So I have, I, wow. I'm by now as well. But they also agreed every graduating class, instead of us teaching from the book, they will train them in person and they will come out with certifications to administer CPR. So that's one of the things that we're doing. So uh, the, the, those classes will, that class will be a lot longer than the, than the normal class, but everybody will be certified. I definitely am interested in that. That So you got I'm a, a, a yes to that. Yes. So anyone who's interested, please let me know immediately because we are running out of time, uh, but I can send you the application, you complete it, send it back, and um, you know we'll do what we have to do. Someone will reach out to you and speak with you about it, and we'll get you in if, if, you, if you meet the qualification, and we, we'd love to have you, love to have you, because we do a lot of work and we want to continue to, to make an impact in the world and serve, the, serve people the way they need to be served and being able to do it ecumenically uh, for anyone, anywhere, anytime, everywhere. And that's important. And I think that even that special part about first aid, I I really want to, uh, I guess I may renew it. I, I started that class years and years ago. So the fact this is part of it, you, you, you certainly peaked what I would lo love to do. So I, I'm in. Yeah, we, um, you know, for us, I, 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 was a, I was a nurse's aide at one point in my life. And so I was, you know, I had to be, had to know CPR. And so I would renew. And I was also, I was also a state police officer and fireman safety officer, and I had to be certified, but I had uh, allowed my certifications to lapse after a number of years. I mean, I kept it for a long, long time. And actually I had to actually administer it, administer CPR twice in my life, twice. Wow. So it's not like it's going to be some stranger somewhere. The first time it was a, I was in a prayer breakfast and a gentleman literally just collapsed off of his chair and he had had a heart attack and I began administering CPR. He lived, he lived, thank God for that. And then the mm -hmm. second time was my mother-in-law. 
So it's not going to be some stranger somewhere, probably but someone right there in your own home, in your right. own house, in your own, right. in your own center of in your circle of influence. Influence, right. It's important that we do it, particularly those of us who find ourselves in crowds, you know, with, with people where right. we gather. Um, when that gentleman fell off that chair, I asked, there was 30 some odd people in that room. And I said, does anybody know CPR? Nobody moved. And I was like, okay, it's been a long time for me. Everybody pray and call 911. And I began to administer CPR. Right. Um, so yes, I, I, no doubt about it. We, 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 we need to do it. So we're doing it. So you, if you want it, we got it. We have a great got unit it. growing. We, we, we only started two years ago and we're at, we're at 67 chaplains already. So wow. Wow. Okay. Doing well. well. About maybe 68 or the, in, in that new number. So, I would, you know, I'm yep, waiting yep. for information. Well, I mean, I, I just want to, you know, thank you, uh, 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 sir, my uh, pastor, to, for had inviting me out tonight, particularly to talk about this particular thing. I, I'm always talking about, you said, I thought about what you said during the break about, you know, you said there's a method and I want to go over maybe the methods. And I think part of the method of how we can get ourselves out of temptation is how we build up who we are and what it is the going in of it like how how it comes and how sometimes we mentioned it earlier in the show how temptation is embedded in righteous indignation how it sneaks up on us how you don't think you're being tempted but you are and how you know you think about looting and you think about that open package that you walk past in the store and like, oh, let me take a chocolate. Let me take a candy. Let me take this. It's already open. And sometimes I think um, working on our justifications, I think, is the biggest thing because I think that we, it's the big stuff that, oh, I won't cheat. Or, oh, I won't rob that store. Oh, I won't do that. But I think it's it's, it's those, it's, it's the in-between, I think, is really where the danger is for a lot of us, and that's Christian, non-Christian, for any any group of people, I think it's it's in those moments of, you know, you know, do it where it seems like anybody else. What would you do? I mean, can you really blame them for doing that? Or if they did you wrong, would you really blame them for doing this extra thing to them? It's like revenge, and I think it's um these these um paradigms and these ways people think are very entrenched in the way we watch television and like you know like uh i remember how things changed in the 80s and mm -hmm. 90s remember watching shows and remember how you knew the guy did the crime and you just knew it and you had the guy colombo or whoever it was come and rough the guy up and he you know just that's you know like he don't give him his lawyer you want you want to sweat him out in the box because before he asks for his lawyer, you want to really get to him and really needle him and whatever it is. That's wrong. Mm. I don't care what the guy did. He's but over the years has changed. But if it's if it's in our culture, it becomes more acceptable. And I think that people have to get smarter about just because it's accepted doesn't mean it's right. You slam a guy yeah he just he just you know you walk into a place and this guy's choking his wife out and the police go and slam him and they put the cuffs on him real you know get him you know like you know you know, rough him up they're wrong your job is not to administer justice your job is to bring them to justice he's owed his day in court and that's just a big like that's one of the obvious things of temptation but one of the other things of temptation is when you're overlooked at the job and you don't send that email because you want to make that person look bad because you knew you're supposed to have it. And it's nepotism or favoritism at the job. And you're going to do that person in because, oh, you know, um, they they're only got that promotion because they're, they're the boss's daughter or the boss's sister or the boss's son or who, whatever reason. And you feel like, why should I help them? Why should I send that email? Why should I send that report that I worked on? That's temptation. Mm. But it's rooted in this kind of self-righteousness is rooted in our get back culture. We have a culture of get back. And it's so, it's so it just seems like it's right. Like we we, we gonna get them back. I, I'm gonna show you, I, I could I could show you better than I could tell you. We we grew up with this kind of get back. But that's a form of temptation that 
is the most dangerous. And well, another you, form you talk I'm about listening. Like like peer pressure and, and peer liberty. pressure and, and how things and how our society na- normalizes this. Cultural and so so it's difficult. You know, it's interesting. Um it was a movie, I can't think of it, but Sean um um what's his name played um James Bond. What's his name? Sean Connery. And and Wesley Snipes were in it. And 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 Sean Connery said something. He he was playing a part of a of a like a retired detective and, and and Wesley Snipes was a detective and they were working with some people from Japan. And um and he said something in that movie. And there's always a line in the movie that kind of makes a movie, right? Makes the show. You know that you're an actor, but always yeah. one line that just kind of captures it. He said, he said, an Eastern philosophy, they're not concerned about who created the problem. Their concern is how do we fix it? In Western culture, we got to point the finger. Somebody's got to, somebody has got to be blamed. Somebody. And so we are a country of, 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 of punishment. So we have, they are, we, have, we incarcerate more people in this country than any other civilized nation in the world. On the face of the planet. This, this country, United States of America, because we are a country that's bent on punishment. And a part of it is because it, you, you kind of alluded to it, but it's a guilt complex. When people know what they've done and they're guilty about it, then suddenly, you know, everybody's guilty because I'm guilty. So if I'm guilty, you got to be guilty. And if you're guilty, you got to be punished for it. And so Dr. King said something years ago. He said, we live in a society where it's not the survival of the fittest, but the survival of the slickest. Now was in the 60s. <laughs> so so yeah. if it was true then, it's true now. The survival yeah. of the slickest. Who can, you know, how, how, how can I lie and get by with it? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, 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 you know uh, uh, what can I do and get away with it? Then, 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 then that means that, I, that I, I win. At the end of the game, I got more toys than you. That means I won the game. Right. And that's what it becomes. So, so by the way, we, we were talking and I said, I'm going to bring in some of the comments, right? Yes. Sir. Um, Erica said, I know I now tell others that I am trying to get to heaven because heaven is where my mom is. Can't get there. If I give into temptation, I say, I stay transparent with all, including myself. She says, I'm getting there. So in preparation for this, um, this this idea of how do you deal with temptations? In what ways? In what ways can we effectively respond when we are confronted by temptation? Andrew says to escape the temptation, I had to believe in a power greater than myself. How do I become greater than myself? How do I do that? How do I how do I rise above the temptation? How do I do that? How do I how do I, you know, when you're on a plane, you have, you have, you have, I know you flew a lot. You talked about going to Japan and Belgium and all this kind of stuff. You run into bad weather. And the pilot will say, hello, uh, uh, this is your pilot speaking. Uh, we're running into some turbulence. Weather is pretty bad. But I'm going to take the plane up to a higher height. I'm going to rise above the storm. Mm-hmm. And so the plane goes up another 5,000 feet above the storm, up there where it's calm. We have to be able to do the same thing. How do we rise above the temptation? How do we get above, you know, this thing that that, that lures us, that pulls us, that that entices us? How do we rise above it? So, I I was going to say that um, I was out of, (laughs) we have to widen our gaze. And I want to introduce this concept tonight to the audience and just to say that this is something like the way in which I look at things. Uh, my phone broke. My wife thinks I have a cheap phone. I probably do. She has an iPhone and I have an Android. And I know people okay. in the audience are going to be, I, I know there's rise. an audience. Got to rise above. <laughs> I, I, Pastor, please do not get involved in this matters <laughs> of, my, of, of my wife and I. So I have an Android. So he's always talking about your Android. Every three months, there's always phones breaking. But I mean, I'm kind of going somewhere with this. So uh, I was in a rental car because my, my car was being worked on this past summer. 
and I went to the place to get my car fixed, my, my phone fixed, and I parked my car maybe eight feet legally of the bus stop. And um, the uh, gentleman, and this is a, this, no one died. So a gentleman lost control. He had a medical incident behind the wheel of a, his Uber and literally ran and crashed. I was on Pennsylvania Avenue and anyone who's listening knows Brooklyn, Pennsylvania in the uh, area. And, I, and the guy made a left turn from uh, Pennsylvania onto Wartman mm. and his car turned on its side. And I wish I could share the pictures from my phone and send them to you so you can share with your audience. And it hit the area where I would have been. And anyone who's ever had their phone worked on knows you could be in that place for five minutes or three hours. I was in there for 18 minutes, give or take, less than more than 15 minutes, less than half an hour. Mm -hmm. And in that time, it had just happened. And the car was on its side. I and mean, Dr. I, I'm going to actually send you the pictures, Dr. Russell, while we're talking so you can see just the magnitude of how fast this car was coming. When I came out, Everyone was like, oh, my gosh, these guys were more upset about this car crashing into my car. And he's, oh, my gosh. And they just going on and on. And I just started, I'm smiling. I'm like, it's, it's just a car. I'm, I'm hoping the guys, I didn't know the guy was okay. But my first prayer went to, this car is on its side. I hope this gentleman's in this car is okay. They had gotten him out to the hospital. And the sister, the daughter, had come to get the guy's belongings. Says, oh, my father. I said, how's your dad? And she's so apologetic about the material. Oh, so, so I was like, I'm worried about your dad having this medical emergency behind the wheel of the car. So hope everybody's all right. And what I've learned to do when I'm faced, I look at inequity, I look at things that don't seem fair. I, I consciously and intentionally widen my gaze. And I look beyond the circumstances of what's happening right in that moment. And what's happening in that moment is everyone's got a different viewpoint of how it's happening. And we keep saying, how does God see it? And that helps us because God sees it as you, you, you weren't harmed, it's just materials, no one got hurt. And, and then people get to take a look at different, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't have been in that situation at all. That's, that's God or whatever it is. Because somebody down the block whose car was just there go, oh, wow. I, Lord, you sure took me out of that one because I was parked there three minutes before. So everyone's got this different view of these things. But my widened view is the car's insured. The guy's all right. I'm okay. It's just this. I called. I was heading to a nursing home. I called, postponed my show, and went to the car back, got another rental car. And like less than two hours later, I was moving along. But I stayed in control of how I saw the situation. And I said, very Mr. Widen your gaze. Tempted to respond. And in a were, way that would take me out of my, yep, there you go. We, we talked about that in the last segment. And like, like this happened to me, right? Like it was, you, you did this to me. It was intentional. And you know what? Somebody's got to suffer for it because, um, you know, you did this and, and it happened to me. And, and you know, a lot of times, and I, I, you're so, Mike, Michael, you're so on point. A lot of times, we personalize these things as if it was intentional. Intentional is intentional yeah. against you. You know, and maybe, maybe the Lord allowed it to happen because He's testing you. Yes, testing to see how you're going to respond in this situation. Like you had that test on the highway. On what was it on the on, on the Bell, the Bell Parkway? So, yes, so sir. Those things are tests. You know, and, and I get it. I mean, the other day I, I was I was getting ready to park and a, a gentleman pulled up and I just walked over to ask the young man or the woman to move so I could park, you know. And so because um, I was parked in, in, in a non-parking zone. Okay. And so the guy pulled up, we were like exactly at the same time. So I said, man, I was just going to ask her. He said, well, I just pulled up. I said, I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, are, are you? And he said he saw another spot. So he went to the other spot. But I was going to tell him, I was going to say, listen, I'm only going to be in the store for five minutes, literally 10 at the max. So if you could just wait a minute, I'll be right back. All right. And that way I won't get a ticket. You won't get a ticket. But he found right. another spot and moved in it. But now at other times, right, I would have argued that, you know, listen, I, I, I came up to the woman first 
and we would argue about us about a parking space. Do you mm. know just about a week or two, a few weeks ago, a young lady was shot in the head about a parking space? Yes, I do know. I, I remember hearing Dr. about Flynn. it. Yes, and sir. He died about a parking space. Yes, sir. Now we got to be careful because the temptation is to stand my ground. Stand your ground. You're righteous. I'm right about this. This, right. this is the this is the cusp of what I'm saying about it is easy to to you know <clears throat> to go past. You see, you're not gonna rob a bank. It, it we gotta worry when it's like personal or when, when it appears personal. Right. When it appears personal. And, and like I said, I got caught up with it with the rage, throwing the water at the guy, the water bottle. He could have responded in a way that was even exacerbated even further, and so I don't mean to be self righteous because we don't, we always don't win, but for the most part, weird when we can, particularly with like you said when we're dealing in the public, particularly right. out like I I go out of my way I'm a as you as your viewers could see I'm a large black man I'm not ashamed of that, but I'm aware of the of my color because I've been black pretty much all my life since I was born so because of that much all, always, your life. <laughs> all my life and so because of that i'm always aware of like you know how i move and and you know i mean you don't know i sing sinatra you don't know white women kiss my hand every day when i'm singing to them and loving them and kissing them you just see a big black guy so you because you don't know that i'm not i don't get indignant when you might i'm not saying they get afraid but i'm more, i'm very aware of who and where I am, particularly I do like I my sisters, my two sisters, we we go out a lot, Costco and Jetros and different places, and we cook it and different things for family members. And and I'm I find myself shopping a lot with them for their kids. And I you know the car and take them because I have a freer schedule. Mm -hmm. And uh I always sort of and people are like, oh okay, you know, wow, they they're very surprised at my at my ability to to be aware of myself and smile at people it doesn't cost anything and uh, and and it puts people at ease but i i i'm intentional about that and some of people, people I'm, I'm going to costco i'm very focused i got my car don't talk to me i won't talk to you don't look at me i won't look at you and maybe it's a, a culture thing maybe it's a language barrier we have a lot of people in the city now so maybe they're not able to say excuse me or hi or hello or maybe they're afraid that that hello is attached to someone trying to scam them or whatever it is. But I do know that I have the ability to put people at ease, but I'm also where the people are very, very, we, we are a uh, uh, people, at least New York city, as we're talking to your viewership, listening from around the country, New York city has become and is a hard town. Mm. So we are, we, we just, we're New Yorkers. We just, we are, we quick with a cuss word. We quick with a bag of, you know, what's, if, if it gets to it, you know, we're quick with that. And because of that, people can get jaded. And when you mix one up together, you got the good, the bad, the ugly, mm. the funky, it's all mixed in together. And we have to be always reminded of who we are. We're who we are. Pastor, you and I are who we are when we go out into the world. And it, it just takes work, but you got to be willing. What keeps that temptation back is be willing to do the work, mm -hmm. not to be taken advantage of, because I got to be because I always say to people, you know, we got this balance is the key to life. You're not going to. Hurt me, you're not going to take advantage of me, you're not going to hurt my wife or my sisters or my nephews and nieces. I'm you know, I'm going to protect them. But I'm certainly aware. And also, too, I could say this to you guys. To your audience tonight and to you pastor we keep letting things happen to us mm. why, why we why we act so surprised when like you know when somebody steps on how, how dare you step on my foot you know like why, why are we so surprised at the end we we sit the equities of life are always around us we're constantly seeing things that are not correct or not right but somehow some way when things happen to us we feign horror over the horror how dare someone do that to me how dare someone cut me off because i'm not because i'm in the middle lane how dare someone do that and we don't always get it right what i'm trying to say to you that's why i was transparent tonight in the earlier segment but when and where we can do the work hmm. do the work and god recognizes that he, it, it's embedded in his gift to us 
His son said, I'll redeem man back to you. His son saw, it's like he saw our humanity. And that's what we have to look at. And it takes a little bit more work to see people's humanity. We know these Karen, like my pastor was talking about the Karens of the world and how, you know, the Karen and us, are you a Karen? You know, you know, you know, people, oh, I, I'm going to take care of these negative people in my life. Sometimes you're the negative person. Sometimes you're the guy at the office who's the jerk. Sometimes you're the person. Can't get rid of yourself. So it just. It, you gotta, that, so I, 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 I preached a sermon. Um, sure. I, I called it the the um, the the execution chamber. And I talked about the church being an execution chamber. I said that it is an incubation chamber because it gives birth to new life. But at the same time, it's an execution chamber because we need to kill that old person that used to come there. You know, that person needs to die. And in fact, we may we should have a funeral service for them, get rid of them. And then we incubate the new person because the Bible says, behold, all things become new, right? Oh. Uh, can't go back in your mother's womb and be born again. But But Jesus said, but I say unto you, you must be born again. Yeah. So, so when I think about that, I think about really, I think about, I think about the fact is that we need to kill off that old person with all of its, with all of its vile and, and, and misguided thoughts. And we got to take on this new creature. We got to become new. Behold, all things become new. We got to become that new person. If we're not, then the old temptations will always when because you know you know people say things and I, I always say be careful what you say because you know what you say becomes who you are um you can't teach old dogs new tricks people say that all the time you know you can't do that and and and, and you know um uh they say things like for instance you know you ask them how they're doing they say oh i'm getting by you know or you know things I'm hanging like, in there hanging in there right and it, it, don't ever tell me that don't don't ever tell me that so i'll tell you i said listen you know what you're a little too dark to be hanging we hung for a long time right you'll be another strange fruit hanging from another tree i don't need you to hang i need you to get a grip climb up on that tree and sit on one of them limbs but don't be hanging nowhere so i don't i don't let people just say things to me anymore because if I do, then I'm contributing to their own ability and their own uh, inability, if you will, to rise above the temptation and slip right back into that same mode. Because if you keep telling yourself these negative things, if you keep allowing those things to enter into your conscience, then how can you, how will you be able to resist temptation if, if, if the words are coming out of your own mouth? Now, how can you do it? Can't. Right. So, so you know, when I looked at Matthew chapter four, verses one through 11, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, you know, Jesus didn't respond by, by, by his own, in his own accord. He responded with the word of God. He quoted the Bible. He, he, he quoted scripture. Why? Because scripture is where the power lies. Scripture is where we get our sense of strength, our sense of our purpose. Without it, you 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 are you are literally literally, you are vulnerable in every way. Jesus recognized. Now think about this. Jesus was God, in the flesh, God in the flesh. He said it. He said in the book of John. Book of John says clearly, right? The Word became flesh and dwelt right. among. We beheld it with the Word. The words with, with, with God, right? John one. So, so, but he was in the when. As he was in the flesh, he experienced what we experienced in the flesh. He became the perfect sacrifice. He became a living sacrifice for our sins so that we don't have to slay a lamb anymore. We don't have to put any blood on the door. He's taking the place of the lamb because he is the great I am. And because of that, he stands there. He says, he says to Satan, look, it is written. He didn't say I said it, even though he said it. He said it is written. And then he came and he said, well, throw yourself down, you know, because the why says Satan said because the angels he's given charge over you that you won't dash your foot against the stone the but the devil reads the Bible more than you do 
He knows it better than you do. And because you don't know it, you can't quote it to him. So he runs around, he runs circles around you because you think he's saying something is wise and you're, he's leading you down the path to perdition. You're going straight to hell because every temptation he throws your way, you go for it because he sounds good. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about because he reads scripture like you don't. And then Jesus turns around. It is also written. Jesus responded to him with another word. And then that last temptation, the last one, I'll give you all of this, all of that, if you just bow down and worship me. Worship me. Now, the Lord gave Satan the ability to have some things because he owns everything, everything. So Jesus understood that. He said, no, 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 no. Let, let, me tell you what, let me tell you what the word says. You shall not tempt the Lord thy God. He, he came back at him with scripture. He blew him out the water. And, and Satan left him because he couldn't deal with it anymore. Oh, yeah. When we get to the point, when we feel tempted to do whatever it is that Satan is putting in our pathway. And, and James is a practical guy. The book of James, James says, we're tempted not, not by what's on the outside, but what's on the inside. So we got to clean up ourselves. You know, uh, I heard someone say before, don't circumcise your flesh, circumcise your heart, because that's where the problem is. You're tempted by what's in you. If you can get rid of that, that's why I said you have to have a funeral service. Go to your own funeral. Buy a casket and lay in it for a little while. Figure out what you what 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 you need to die from. Right, die from. Die from it, and then get up a new creature. If we're not doing that, if we're not if we're not consistently dying to ourselves, we'll never be able to defeat the tempter because he's constant in his temptation, unrelenting, and the one. The one temptation that you thought you were, you got over, that you were done, I'm done with that, he'll put it right back in your face. Yeah. Right there in your face. I mean, listen, whoremongering, drugs. I talked about my brother. My brother was through with drugs, went to rehab. It was years. But when his heart was broken, fell right back into it. And my brother died from AIDS. So my brother was a heroin user. He used to shoot dope. Mm -hmm. So he began shooting dope with his friends. All of them that used to shoot dope together, all of them died from AIDS, all of them. Those were the ones they broke away, they gotten clean, but they came back and did it again because the same temptation that we it had not been, had not been dealt with. Back. And they fell for the what we call in the street, fell for the okie doke. Okie doke, yep. Yeah. And so they used to share, share and they all died. died. And that was in the time when they didn't have these cocktails that they have now. One pill, and you could be good for the for the rest of your life just take it once a month once every six months and you're good mm -hmm. no they had they had no drugs for that it's like when covid first hit we had no no nothing, animal, nothing. no vaccine nothing nothing folks were dying left and right and and i in my day low, low, i'm a little older than you are michael so in my day sure. you know um people overdosing was a daily we see ambulance coming for people overdosing every single day now with this fentanyl out, you see it happening now, but now they've got a drug to deal with, it's called Narcan. Right. And everybody needs to know how to use Narcan. I've been trained in that. I got a little- I, I would like to, you know, I like to know I, how to use it. Yes, it. because we, we need to know, that, that's how we protect, that's how we insulate ourselves. Yes, sir. So in the circles that we float in, you go in the nursing homes, You've been in a nursing home, people have, somebody have a heart attack right there. They're, code, they're coding, they, they, I, I've been there and they code it. Yeah. And everything shuts down. Everything shuts down. <laughs> and, and sometimes the, the, the doctor or the nurse won't be able to get there that soon, that fast. But if you're there and you know what to do, you start doing the, you start doing 
compressions. And when they get there, you may have saved that person's life. Life, right. Because if it takes three minutes, three minutes is long enough to die. So, you know, that's what I'm looking at. So let me let me share with you a couple of things that came in. Sure. I it was interesting. Gloria, Gloria said, it's not a sin to be tempted. That's right. Not a sin to be tempted. Giving in is a sin. But God gave us a way to escape through the Holy Spirit, God's grace, and the blood of Jesus. God's word helped me. Ephesians 6 and 17. Thank then you, she said, you. amen. And she said, okay, is it okay to say, I'm holding on? <laughs> if we got what we're talking about. <clears throat> but don't say you hanging in. Just don't right. say you I'm hanging in there. I just don't, I just don't like that phrase at all, Gloria. So yeah. if you ever say it to me, you know, I'm gonna come back at you. Come back you right? Coming back at you. Um, so let me see. So someone asked, how did I become a chaplain? Um, uh, Michael, reach out to me. Um, you have my you you see me on screen, you know I'm J. Lauren Russell. I am matters of faith, either one. Just send me a text and I'll get I'll send you the application. Okay. And you have to fill out the application. We have to get a reference for you. And then you, you know, we'll enter you into the class and we'll give you all of the details that you need. All right. But make sure you get that to me immediately because um at the end of the day, you know, um, I have to have these things in by Wednesday, Thursday at the latest, because we start on Saturday. Okay. So everybody's clear with that. Very good. Let's see. Oh, Erica said she had to do CPR on her grandson when he was one year old. Wow. Yeah, one year old. Um, and I'm glad because Erica, you know, you don't mind me saying this to you, Erica. Erica is a retired police officer. Okay. So they have to be trained to. regularly. As a first responder, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I'm glad yeah. you did. I'm glad that you were ready, willing, and able to do it. Because some people, you know, because it's somebody close in the family, they panic. Some people panic. And if they panic, you know, even though they've been trained, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't do it because, you know, they could do it to a stranger, but they might not be able to do it to somebody who's close to them. But Pastor, you even said that we that it, most likely it'll be someone you know. It'll be someone, an aunt, an uncle, and you know, a friend. <clears throat> it'll be someone we clearly know. So it's very rare that we, it's usually someone you know. So I, I, it's more important than that. So you're right about that. Very important. Very important. Very, very important. Um, let me see. She kind of gave me a comment. So, oh, so uh, the, she said, I panicked, but thank God I did it. Thank you for sharing that, Erica. That, that's thank really, you, Erica. it's really important. Because these things are are critically important. So, and it's also, you know, uh, as we think about temptation, as we think about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, being equipped so that we can deal with temptation properly, uh, it is important. It is so important that we equip ourselves. Equipped. Uh, 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 Michael used the word insulate to make sure that you are ready when temptation comes. Now, you don't know what the temptation may be, but you got to be ready. And to be ready, this is my argument, you have to be ready to respond in the way that Jesus responds. You don't have to know the Bible from cover to cover, every verse in it. You don't have to do that. But, 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 if, but if you could say, if you could say, um, Lord, you take this one because I can't handle it. That's fine. That's called prayer. <laughs> That's called prayer. I say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking your guidance. I need your help. I can't handle this one myself. That's prayer. We need to be able to pray. We need to be able to put ourselves in a position so that we can literally help somebody else. And we help, our, help other people best. And I talked about this last week. We're able to do and help people best when we're at our best. So, Make it a habit. Make this a habit. Make sure you study, read something of the Bible every day. If you don't read anything else, today is what, the, the 9th of October? Yes, sir. Then you should have read the ninth chapter of Proverbs. There are 31 chapters in Proverbs, 31. Most months have 31 days. 
April, was it April, June, and September? All the rest have 31. Except February, which has 28. 20. Oh, 29 for the leap year, which is another two years. So if you read the book of Proverbs, whatever day of the week it is, day of the month it is, read that book of Proverbs. Read that chapter. Read that chapter. If you do it, you'll have read Proverbs 12 times during the course of the year. 12 times. It's a book of wisdom. It's a practical book. How do you put into application this word that you want to become, that you want to become a part of your life? Read the book of Proverbs. Tomorrow is the 10th. Read the 10th chapter. I'm testing you next week to see if you did it. <laughs> Test you. And, and the ninth is it talks about um <clears throat> Invitations of wisdom and folly, wisdom. and wisdom has built her house. That's what the uh, ninth is talking about. Wisdom yep. has built her house. So, wisdom. About, you know, wisdom and foolishness. But I, I want to, you know, before I know you're closing, and I'll give you that to close. But I want to thank you, Dr. Russell, for having me on. I really appreciate your help in terms of my career and all that I'm doing. And, and uh, you know, congratulations on the governorship for the Rotary and uh, to be part of that. So I really thank you. You've done more in these last year and a half. Been a, been a long, long time, and for and many people. So you're one of those people that I seek out, and I and I look to you for uh, guidance and leadership. And I thank you, sir. Well, you're quite welcome. And it's interesting. I should say this too. Michael was at my installation. In fact, Michael was my entertainment at my installation. Michael provided all of the sound that we needed. And by the way, should I say that comments were you didn't hear the comments. People said that was the most exciting, the most uh, enlightened, the most lively um, installation they had ever attended in their <laughs> being in Rotary. Wow. That that was the common comment of everybody. They'd never been to one like that before. Thank you, Michael, for making no, it. No, thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Happen. So let me do this because the Lord has placed something on my heart. I don't think it'll take the entire nine minutes, but if it doesn't, that's good. Then we can come back and we can chat a little bit. I'm going to take this down because I got the wrong picture up on my screen. So I'm going to stop that share and I'm going to go back and get my right share because I want to make sure that we get the right picture up there because this is this is Brother Michael uh, Harley and I want everybody to see Michael Harley. I'm going to put him up there on the screen so they can see him. So I'm going to share this one. Make sure we get the right one up there. And this is of course, we're talking about the way of escape. Right. So there we go. And Michael had it behind him anyway. So I, I felt <laughs> right. Right. so here we go. But listen, you know, temptation, temptation is hard to resist. When Satan took Jesus on the pinnacle and showed him the kingdoms of the world, he thought the temptation of power and influence would be an offer Jesus couldn't refuse. All Jesus had to do to get it was bow down and worship him. Satan didn't know who he was talking to. He thought he did, but he had no idea that Jesus truly was and is God in the flesh. Jesus' response to Satan was declarative. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. This past week, the United Missionary Baptist Association was in session and the theme was facing temptation strong. It is an engaging subject taken from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. It was also the annual session where the presidents of the various auxiliaries gave their annual addresses. As the president of the Associate Ministers, John Luster Scott Associate Ministers Auxiliary, I had the honor of preaching in that session. My sermon was taken from the theme, but I added a subtopic, which was when servant, when the servant is committed when the servant is committed. The article I wrote combined the theme and the sermon so that my readers would clearly see the gracious way of escape the Lord has provided. Jesus responded to all of Satan's temptations with the word of God. And to this last temptation, the one that is, in my opinion, the most difficult of the three, the temptation of power and glory and fame. His Response was both affirmative and declarative, Clarity. for it is written, you shall, not, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. 
Jesus didn't try fighting temptation on his own. He recognized he was in the flesh and understood clearly that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You cannot fight Satan's temptation on your own either. You can't do it. Thank God we have Jesus, who is the word that became flesh. He is the one who told us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no one comes to the Father except through me. John 14 and 6, if you want to look it up, don't, don't take me at my word. It's in the word. He set the standard that shows us how to defeat Satan and to overcome temptation. Whether we are loved or hated, blessed or cursed, hugged or punched, or maybe a bottle thrown at us, yeah. whether we are persecuted or prospered, abused or advanced, cracked up or cash rich, homeless or heroic, an inmate or an investor, sick or well, Jesus gave us the word of God, which is the way of escape. My guest tonight has shown us what a person looks like who uses the way of escape in their life, navigating the world of entertainment and the walk of faith is a road filled with temptation. If he was ill-equipped to deal with the temptation, he would have fallen a long time ago. Everybody makes mistakes. And nobody's perfect. So we don't try to be perfect. We just work with what we have to work with and get better day by day. His life has been shaped, formed, and fashioned by his commitment to the word of God. I love what he's talked about when he said, my mama told me something a long time ago. She said, let people, no, this is his, his mentor, Ruth Jones, let people be who they are. And he learned from that. Michael, at one point in my life, you know, I was a business manager for a gospel record company before gospel music had hit the mainstream. I remember having a chat with the CEO and I told him that the greatest challenge that we will face in the gospel recording business is for gospel artists to remain meek when the world treats them like rock stars. The temptation, I told him, was for the artist to receive the blessings of fame and fortune, even acclaim and adulation with humility. I want to thank you for sharing with us and showing us how that's done. Because you could take the other road easily, but you didn't do that. Thank you for sharing with us and showing us how to do it with humility. I'm grateful for you for carving out time, not just a little bit, but two full hours to bless us tonight. Your transparency and your humility has been refreshing. You made it easy to have this broadcast tonight in the same way you made it easy to call you friends since the moment I met you. It was like instantaneous and I appreciate that. Thank you, Dr. And this was your first visit. Yes. That is a faith family. That's what I call it, the matters of faith family. But let's be sure that it's not your last. There Check you go. And I want you to see when you can schedule yourself to visit with us again. And we'll make it happen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor. And thank you to all the uh, residents, the people listening tonight. Forgive me. We don't sing tonight that we keep you in prayer as well. And we thank you, sir. We keep you lifted up for, for you doing the work of God. Because you're doing it and preparing these different shows. So we pray your strength in the Lord as you do the Lord's work. God wow. bless you, sir. Thank you, man. Stay right there. Don't leave. Don't leave. And I'll take that as a yes, as an affirmative. I take that as a yes. Now, don't forget our sponsors and advertisers, the JLR Company, J. Lauren Russell Consulting, LLC. That's J. Lauren R. Consulting, LLC. Those are my companies. For all your church financial needs, call 718-328-8096, 718-328-8096, or visit our website, www.jlaurenrussellconsulting.com www.jlaurenrussellconsulting.com. It's not about the castle, y'all. It's about the kingdom. We're kingdom builders here. And Matters of Faith, the book, I've been talking about it all night, but this is the book. This is the book. You see how thin it is? It's designed to go with you any way you go. And, it, and, and I've been talking about the price at $22. It's not. Every time I go to the post office, they raise the price. The book is $23.92. $3.92 for shipping and handling. 
or you can get it as an ebook. Now, if you get it as an ebook, there's no shipping and no handling, and you get it immediately. Go to www.smashwords.com backslash books backslash view backslash nine nine three one seven seven. So that's on your that's on your your website. That's on that's on the post. But listen, if you want to get it hard copy, then make sure you go to my cash app dollar sign matters of faith. If you do that, then I will sign the book and I will send it to you. Uh, just go there, make sure you put your address in, and I will make sure that I sign it and you'll get a fresh copy and it'll have my signature on it. Go to Matters of Faith, dollar sign Matters of Faith, uh, pay, make the payment, and I'll make sure that the book gets out as early as tomorrow, okay? Better Mag Magazine, www.abettermag.com. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is a wonderful Black-owned publication. It's a beautiful magazine. A two-year subscription is only $27.50, a two-year subscription. So please, ma'am, please, sir, avail yourself of it. Get the subscription. You'll love it. It's got great articles. They now caught their fault. They, they're printing my column. So Matters of Faith is in the magazine. Please, ma'am, please, sir, avail yourself of it. Now, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Telephone, text, email, message, any way you do it, but tell a friend to join us regularly on Matters of Faith on Monday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. We are always live on Matters of Faith and the J. Lauren Russell Facebook groups. Now, when the shows are over, as we will do tonight, we drop each episode on our Matters of Faith YouTube channel. You can watch Matters of, you can watch YouTube lying in your bed because it's on your TV. But if you, right. you friend the channel, then you'll be able to get it and you'll be able to look at this show and any other others that we have anytime you want. That's why I ask every week that you subscribe, like, and share the Matters of Faith YouTube channel. Now, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, if no one has told you this today, let me be the first to say that I love you. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. So get used to it. God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you next week. Same time, same taste, same station. J. Lauren Russell, Matters of Faith, Facebook groups. Good night, y'all.